Let's talk about builds, baby. Let's talk about decorating. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that make me. Let's talk about builds. Let's talk about decorating. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new video. This time we're going to be talking about my top interior design hints, tips, and tricks for The Sims 3. Now you're probably wondering, why are we staring at the exterior of this beautiful unfurnished family farmhouse? Well, I will tell you for why. I took my own advice, I came back with a fresh pair of eyes as I often do, and I wasn't particularly happy with the layout that I had put up for download. And also, because I filmed part one all in one, it was meant to be my building and decorating top tips, you may find in the last version that there is some rogue burglar alarms, mirrors, and other bits and pieces that are just floating around. So this version is completely bare. The two main bedrooms on the main level are slightly larger. So if you prefer this version over the last version, it will be down below in the description for you to do with it as you please. Now, before we pop on into the interior, I just wanna say a couple of things. Firstly, thank you to everyone who commented on Twitter, on the community tab, and on the last video. I really, really appreciate it. Some of the suggestions I won't get to in this video. Some of them I may bring out a video of their own because there were some really good suggestions that I want to cover, but I feel like they need to be more in depth. And secondly, interior design is very much a personal thing. It has taken me years to get to a place where I'm comfortable with my interiors. If you don't believe me, just go and have a look at some of the videos that are under my What the Plum series because eesh, 10 years ago, I have no idea what I was thinking. I didn't know what I was doing. And way back then, I wanted to be an interior designer and I bet you guys wouldn't believe it with some of the crap that I was putting out. It was bad. For this video, it's going to be broken down into top tips and then we're going to have smaller tips. These smaller tips are going to be more attention to detail things things that I think about that I'm not sure that other people think about. And we could dub them my neurotic tips because some of them are a little OTT. Now, before we pop on into the interior, I'm ready to share my very first tip. I always find it very helpful when designing the inside of a home if I'm doing it for a particular family or a particular sim in mind. I take into account what their favorite color might be, what kind of activities they could be into, their likes, their dislikes, and that really helps me when I'm designing spaces, is if I'm thinking of a particular family or a particular sim. So that is tip number one. But without further ado, let's pop on into the inside and let's get started. This video is going to be a jam-packed of hints, tips, and tricks, so I hope that it is very helpful and very useful to all of you out there. So here we are looking at an overview of the main level of the home. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is not necessarily layouts, because as you can see, my layouts are kind of janky, but minimum room sizes. If you like tight, cozy spaces like I do, keeping minimum room sizes in your mind when you're designing will help you out. So the first thing that I wanna show you is what I had in mind for each space that you're looking at now. And then if we pop to the top right hand corner where the main bedroom is, let's start there. So if you wanted to go really eensy weensy teensy tiny and it, it just may be a tight squeeze, you could go four by four, but I would recommend that your minimum room size for a main master bedroom would be a five by five square. Now, obviously we're not looking at a five by five square and there's a lot more that we can do with this space, but at a minimum, five by five would be a plenty of space. And I'm just gonna pop on the grid and I'm going to show you what I mean. If I hit G on my keyboard, that turns on the grid. And then we're gonna go and we're gonna grab the Sweet Dreams bed, which is one of my favorite beds. It came with Showtime. It is 560 simoleons. And if you're working on a budget, this bed is a primo because you get a great return on investment. We've got energy of seven 
cabin stress relief of three and environment of one. So a double bed in The Sims is two across and three down. So if we wanted to throw in a side table. Let me grab the face in the crowd in table by standard issue. We're going to plop that one there. We're going to grab another one and plop that over there. And then with a five by five square, you could also add a dresser. So we're going to grab the dresser that came with Showtime and we're going to pretend there's a wall behind that. And there you go, there's your five by five square. You've got plenty of space. You could place a door right there to get into the room and your Sims will have plenty of room to maneuver around. So at a minimum, your main master bedroom, a five by five square. So directly down from the main bedroom, I've placed a family bathroom. So this is the bathroom that other bedrooms can use, even Sims friends, visitors could use this main bathroom if they wanted to, but we'll talk about another bathroom that they could use. But the main family bathroom, I would recommend at a minimum a three by three square. So if for instance, you just wanted a simple shower, let's plop that there. Let's grab the old trusty dusty bargain John and plop that there. And we're gonna grab my favorite sink, which is the E2.10 standing laundry tub. Boom, bang, bosh, a three by three square would work. Obviously I wouldn't lay this bathroom out like this, but we have plenty more ways that we could lay out the bathroom. We could plop this over there, that over there, and we could also have a tub if we wanted to, just a tub works perfectly. And you could lay out the bathroom like this. There's nothing wrong with this particular layout, but then there's also room to decorate a little bit more. So at a minimum, I would say a main family bathroom that all the Sims, maybe even guests might use, three by three square, does the job perfectly. Now, if we move just directly down from that little three by three square, and we move to the second bedroom, which I, in this instance, would dub a kid's bedroom, at a minimum, a very, very minimum, I would say a four by three rectangle would work. Now, obviously this is a lot larger than four by three, so there's so much more that we could do with this particular rectangle, but at a minimum, a four by three will do you just grand. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Scholarly Slumber Single Bed by Standard Issue. And as you can see, a single bed is one by three. So potentially this could be a twins room or you could also make it just a full-on kids room and you could put a bunk bed in there and have a single bed down here. The possibilities are endless and a four by three rectangle is perfect. You could put an end table under the bunk beds. You also, depending on where you put the door and how you actually laid out the room to make it more functional, you would have space for a toy box and it would be great as a kid's room. So four by three is perfect for a kid's room. Now, if we mosey on out of the kid's room into that little hallway that leads you to the bedrooms and the main bathroom, we have got another larger hallway. So my rule for hallways that are main traffic areas for Sims is that they need to be at least two square tiles wide. It doesn't really matter the length of it, but two square tiles wide is my minimum that I will do. As much as I love cozy, cozy spaces, just a one square tile wide hallway makes me feel slightly claustrophobic. So I will always try and make sure that my hallways are at least two square tiles wide. And then as well, if you wanted to use a double staircase, you can have one sim going up, one sim coming down, and there's not going to be that traffic jam where they're waving their arms, stomping their feet. So two square tiles wide for a hallway. So we're gonna mosey on to the left of the hallway and we are going to take a look at the half bathroom. Now in this instance, my half bathroom is a lot bigger, not a lot bigger, but it's bigger than what I would normally make a half bathroom. So at a minimum, I would make sure that my half baths are two by two. So I'm going to grab a good old bargain John, plop that there. I'm gonna go back to my trusty dusty favorite, my E2.10 standing laundry tub. 
boom bang bosh that is all a half bathroom consists of it's a toilet and a sink and that is all now obviously this one is a little a little bit bigger because I didn't want some janky alcove. Um, I could have put a janky alcove, but then I would have only had a one square tile hallway to get into said half bathroom. So I avoided that. I made this two by three, but at a minimum, a two by two square will work perfectly for a half bathroom. And your half bathroom is typically what your guests will use. So they're not traipsing through the sleeping quarters of your Sims homes, which is to the right of the screen as you're looking at it now. It may even be the toilet that your Sims children use when they come in from school and they need a wee and they're gonna run into the half bathroom really quickly. That is what that bathroom is purposed for. Speaking of half bathrooms, this brings me to my very first neurotic tip. I'm gonna turn off the grid because the grid really, really annoys me. I cannot build with the grid on. <sighs> off it goes. So my very first neurotic tip, and just bear with me, this is just how I think. But with half bathrooms, I will never, ever, ever, if I can help it, put a half bathroom near a dining room or a kitchen. And I know Sims can't smell poop particles. I know that is not realistic, but in my mind, there is just something about the thought of poop particles mixing with lobster thermidor or mac and cheese and it just gets contaminated and it really just gives me the heebie-jeebies. It makes my skin crawl and if I see that in real life, that is like a big turnoff for me. There's just something about that image in my head that somebody's dropping a deuce in the half bathroom, somebody's cooking in the kitchen, and the smells just mesh together. And it's just a huge no-no for me. So that is neurotic tip number one. I do not put the half bathrooms near food preparation spaces or food eating spaces because gross. So my next tip is around lighting. I got a question specifically about lighting. What to do if things are too intense, so very fluorescent lights, and they reflect off your surfaces. What to do if you've got a particularly dark quarter. So I'm going to cover that now. So we're looking at what is the living room in this home, and we've got two lights hanging from the ceiling. And the room is pretty well lit, but if I were to take away this light, let's take away that light, that other corner isn't very well lit. Even if I move this light in the center, you've got corners that are unlit. So there are a few things that you can do to help with light intensity and brightness. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is if we just come up here to the light and hover over it and we go shift control and we click on it, you're gonna get this pie menu. So if you come over here, you see set intensity. So we can brighten up the space by going to bright and you can brighten up this room, all the lights in the house or this particular light. So we're just going to light up this particular light and see what happens. So it didn't do a whole heck of a lot. I think I had this light already on the highest brightness. So you can see that we've still got dark corners. Sims 3 isn't known for its brilliant lighting, but there are ways around this. So I'm going to open up my cheat box, shift control C, and we're gonna type in by debug and that's going to bring up another menu with this question mark and we've got things like tomb objects underwater objects fish spawners garden plants and seed spawners rock gem and metal spawners insect spawners but where we want to be is the miscellaneous objects so if you come over here you can see well you can't really see anything because these are the invisible ceiling area lights and it goes from one by one all the way up to four by four, I think. And not only are there square options, there are circular options. So a lot of times when I'm decorating homes, I do use these invisible ceiling lights. So you'll obviously be able to see them when you're in build and buy mode, but when you're in live mode, they do disappear, hence the invisible part of the invisible ceiling light. So if I just place them over in the corners, it's gonna light up the corners a little bit. 
So, and then you can also shift control and click on these and you can set the intensity of the invisible lights. And we're going to go for this particular room to brighten it up. Now on the flip side, if you've got lights that are reflecting off your surfaces and it's too bright, you can do the same thing. You shift control click, you set intensity and you dim it. You can dim this room and it dims down the lights. That's probably a bit too dim, but you get my drift. So if we just go shift control click again, let's just set it back to normal and let's do this room back to normal. Another fun thing that you can do with lights is you can actually change the color of your lights. Now this could be used to create unique spaces for your Sims. Uh, it could evoke a mood or a feeling. So sometimes, I don't do this very often, I don't play with light colors a lot, but sometimes it's really nice to go shift control, click, and you set the color to flame. And let's do all the lights in a flame. So what that does is it really gives it a warm, cozy feeling. And it's not that whoa in your face, fluorescent, bright white light. But alternatively, let's say you had a Sim who was in the photography career and you wanted to create them a dark room. You can set your lights to red. And let's go for this room and look an automatic dark room. Just by changing the color of the lights, it gives it a completely different mood, a completely different feel. So feel free to play around with the lighting in your Sims rooms, in the entire home, and just make it your own. Play around, have a good time. So one of the first things we spoke about was room sizes, but now I wanna talk about a couple rooms and how I lay them out. So here we are in what I believe would be the kitchen in this house. And I love to start in kitchens because I believe that it is the heart of the home. So I'm gonna quickly lay out a kitchen and then I will talk you through it. So this is a super basic kitchen layout. It's an L-shaped layout, but I do have one golden rule when I am designing kitchens. I like to follow the triangle rule. And what I mean by the triangle rule is that your fridge, your sink, and your stove all form a triangle. So it's an easy path for your sim to go from the fridge to the stove and then to the sink to wash up their dishes. Now here's a couple of neurotic tips for you. These are things that I wouldn't do in a kitchen. I would never put a fridge in front of a window, nor would I put a stove in front of a window. And I will explain my thinking. So with the fridge in front of a window, to me, that blocks off light. Now I know that rays of sunshine aren't going to be streaming through your Sims windows, but this is just my thought process when I'm laying things out. I wouldn't want any potential sunlight to hit the back of the fridge. It just seems like a waste of a window and a waste of light coming through even though it doesn't. And it's the same with a stove. I would always try to put a sink under a window rather than a stove under a window because while your Sims are doing their dishes, why aren't they looking out into the backyard or their neighbor's house or somewhere out the window instead of at a blank wall? So I wouldn't lay out a kitchen like it's laid out now. And Yes, there is a bit of a triangle, but it's a very smushed triangle. Let's have a little space for your Sims to maneuver. So now I'm gonna show you a different layout for the kitchen, and this is gonna be more of a galley style layout. Because if you remember from the overview, this was both the kitchen and the dining room. And right now with an L-shaped kitchen, there's not huge amounts of space for a dining table. So let me show you what I would do if I was doing a galley style kitchen. So this is a good starting point for a galley style kitchen, but there's still nowhere for your Sims to sit. So we can add seating a couple of ways. The first way that we can add seating is by adding island counters. So let's just pop three island counters 
right here against the half wall and then you can put stools in the back for your sims to sit on. Now let's say that you didn't want the half wall there. A lot of times I don't have a half wall there. So let's get rid of the half wall and let's go about adding those island counters back. So if I try to add them back, straight away, they're just gonna try to snap to the slot. So this is where the next cheat comes in. So if you open your cheat box again, and we type in disable snapping to slots on alt space on, this allows me by holding the alt key to freely move the island counters. It's a very precise and it's all about precision. But once you've got the first one in, the others should just snap to each other. And sometimes you need to finagle it a little bit more. So it's best to start from the left and go to the right and then just click on your other counters and they all should snap into place. So you've got island seating, you've got a galley kitchen and this works really, really well. But say you actually wanted a dining table in here what would you do? So I've put my half wall back and I'm gonna go into the dining tables and I'm gonna grab the sun up breakfast table because it's one of my favorites. Now I do have move objects on, I forgot to say that first of all, I always decorate with move objects on, but I always make sure that I test my homes or I try to make sure that I test my homes with my tester sims. So you can just put your table there and then grab these UV by UWE chairs and just plop them around and then double check to make sure they're all attached. This rogue one isn't, just plop it there and then you've got yourself a dining table. Now, you notice behind the dining table that there is a nook and you can do a couple things with a nook. If you've got a kitchen diner, number one, you can pop in a china cabinet or if your Sims are a fan of the nectar like I am, grab some nectar racks and make them a little nectar corner. In this small space, we've got two separate rooms and I think it works really well. And with the galley kitchen, we're still following the golden triangle rule. So from your fridge to your stove to your sink. And I would also pop in a dishwasher at the side of your sink. Dishwashers always, always go by the side of a sink just because it's easy access. And then you can pop a trash can at the end of your island and you've got the basis for a very functional kitchen. Now I just wanna go back quickly and I wanna talk about this refrigerator. So this is the old looking new fridge and this came with Supernatural and it is one of my favorite fridges if I'm building on a budget. It's 425 simoleons. Keep that figure in your head because I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later on in the video, but you get really good return on investment with this fridge. So it affords your Sims a hunger of eight and an environment of four. So for such an old looking new fridge, it is quite cheap and cheerful, but you get the goods. For your sims still on the topic of room layouts we are now in the bathroom and this is going to come with another neurotic tip of mine this is quite a large bathroom so just ignore the size of it and we'll work with the three main things that you need for your sims bathrooms now i don't normally decorate bathrooms on camera because what do i always say about bathrooms you shit shower and you shave in them and they're quite boring rooms to decorate but the basics of laying out a bathroom is this i wouldn't necessarily have your shower your toilet and then your sink all in a row that's kind of a boring layout so with any room that you're decorating you do want to create some interest i know it's only a bathroom i know they're quite boring but you can still create interesting layouts but my number one no-no for bathrooms is this if we're focused on where the shower is and where the toilet is please don't do this and you're probably looking at this going but why <laughs> I'll tell you for why. My question to you is, where is the shower plumbing going to go? Now I know it could come from underneath the flooring, but to me, this just doesn't look realistic to have your shower head not attached to a wall. So if you absolutely wanted your shower to be where it is as you're looking at it now, the best way to get around that is to just plop a wall down and then your shower head is plumbed into the wall. Again, this is my thinking, this is how I think and the th thought processes that go through my mind when I'm decorating. 
but now to me that says that that shower is plumbed and ready to go. Or if you just wanted to keep it simple, put your shower against the other wall <laughs> and that works. So that's a quick little tip for your bathrooms. Just pay attention to where the plumbing is. So before we move on to the living room, I've got another neurotic tip for you. So if we go and grab the thief text gotcha burglar alarm, for me, the best placement of a burglar alarm is as close to the door as possible. You could even have one of these by the back door if you wanted to. What happens when a burglar comes onto your lot, you're going to get that creepy music that gives everybody a jump scare, but as soon as they open the front door, your burglar alarm is going to go off. It's going to wake your Sims up if they are at home, and they will either be prompted to fight said burglar or call the police to deal with it. And that's half the fun of The Sims, is taking on a burglar and seeing if your Sims is strong enough to take them down before they take all of your stuff. What I wouldn't do with a burglar alarm, and I've seen this in some beautiful homes, and I understand the reasoning behind why people would do this, but for me, it doesn't compute with real life. What I wouldn't do is put your burglar alarm outside. Like I said, I get it because as soon as the burglar steps onto the front porch now, your alarm's gonna go off and it's gonna give your Sims inside the home a little bit more time to either come out and fight the burglar or call the police, thus keeping the burglar from stealing your stuff, I get it. But my thinking is, what if somebody's behind you while your Sims putting in the code? They don't put in codes for burglar alarms. But in real life, what if someone was behind you watching what code you put in? And then when you go on vacation, they could come and yoink all your stuff anyway. So your burglar alarm is rendered pointless. So for me, I would never put a burglar alarm on the outside. It's always on the inside. And that is another neurotic tip for you. So I actually remembered that I have another neurotic tip and this one's probably going to send wigs flying because this is absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, this is something that I do think about when I'm decorating Sims homes. So we are upstairs in my two tile wide hallway, might I add. And this neurotic tip is about doors. <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it. So I pay attention to the way that a door swings. <laughs> so you've got your doorknob as you can see it. So this particular door into this bedroom is going to swing this way. And this is the way that I would put this door because you can't put anything behind the door anyway. Had I put the door this way, that to me renders this space useless because doors in my mind and in real life can swing all the way open. So I wouldn't put anything here because it becomes dead space and the door might knock it. Yes, I know you can have things behind your door in real life, but I just try to keep things clear for my Sims, especially if there was something here there's a possibility that there could be clipping and I hate clipping. So yes, I do pay attention to the way that the doors swing in my Sims homes. And I take that into account whenever I am decorating. Yes, I know that's probably the most neurotic tip ever, but it's something I think about, keeps me up at night. Not really. So the next room we're gonna talk about layout wise is the living room. And you can see that I've got this fireplace here. So we're just gonna kind of decorate around the fireplace. The wall that the fireplace is on, that is my focal wall. And I usually try to have a focal wall in each of my rooms. And that's where I deviate from the main wallpaper that's all around the entirety of the house. I'll usually pick a focal wall and it'll have a pattern or something different than the rest of the walls. So let me just show you how I would lay out this living room. So this is the very basics of what I would do. You've got your two-seater, you've got your three-seater, you've got your TV above your fireplace, and then your two end tables. But let's say you didn't necessarily want a TV above the fireplace. So ignore the TV that's above the fireplace, but you could also do this, put a TV in the corner, or you could move the TV that is above the fireplace and put it 
over there and then ignore the TV that's in the corner. So there's some different options to play with. What I wouldn't do is I wouldn't place a standing lamp there and I will tell you for why. So in my mind, <laughs> what I'm thinking when I see that lamp that's just there is where's the cord gonna go? And all I can think of is little trip hazards for Sims. I know this is the Sims. I know there's not cords. I know there's not plugs. But for me and how I decorate, these are the things that I think about. So I would never put a lamp this far away from the wall because how's it gonna get plugged in? And that's just how I think. Crazy, I know. Another thing that I probably wouldn't do if I could help it, is this. I try very, very, very hard not to put televisions in front of windows. Sometimes it can't be avoided, but again, in my head, I think, what if the sun is streaming through on the back of that television constantly? Like imagine if seasons hadn't come out yet, so the sun is always shining and it's beaming through those windows and it's just warping the back of your Sims television. And then eventually the wires get all kerfluffled and discombobulated and it can bust and you have a fire in your hands. Again, this is The Sims, that would never happen, but that is just, how my brain works and what I think about. So if I can avoid it, I don't put TVs in front of windows. Now we're getting to the fun stuff, the meat and potatoes, the bread and the butter. We are going to talk about Moo. Move objects on. I always decorate with move objects on, on, because you can create so many unique and different things than the game already gives you. So, we're gonna do a few things around this room um, that you can only do with move objects on. So the first thing that I wanna show you is to how to create a bigger dining table for your Sims. Let's say you've got a house full of eight and you don't wanna put a long table. You want a different shaped table for all your Sims to sit at. So I have pulled the Sun Up breakfast table and we're just gonna kind of repeat the process. So I've grabbed the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna eyedrop it again. I'm also going to grab the UV by Uwe chairs and do those again. It's very important that you get the chairs on before we start manipulating the tables and moving them around. So let me just grab the rest of the tables and chairs. I couldn't remember how many we needed, so we've got one on standby. But anyway, we've gone, we're gonna go to the hand tool and we're just gonna start with this top one up here, we're gonna grab it and we're gonna make it go vertical like so. And then we're gonna grab this other one and then we're gonna grab this other one and we're going to actually put it on an angle like so. And then this one, this last one is going to fill the gap. So I didn't need this at all. But look, you've got a bigger table. It can seat eight Sims and you've got a unique table that's not available in game. And I have play tested this before, so I know it works. My only recommendation is that you change the top to something other than a wood grain. Otherwise you're gonna have wood grains going here, there and everywhere. But you know, if that's your jam, if that's what you want it to look like, go for it. Like I said, interior design is very much a personal choice type of thing. So we're gonna mosey over to this side, looking out the window, and I've got what can traditionally be used in your hallways, and it's kind of boring. This came with Supernatural, it's called the Elegance End Table. It's super duper expensive, uh, 465 simoleons. If you wanted to recreate something like this in your hallways and you're not going for the fancy dancy look that this one gives you, just, Deleted. And then I've pulled the old sawhorse, which I believe came with pets. It's 65 simoleons. And then I'm gonna grab the astral plane wall shelf by Van Allen Decor, which is 50 simoleons. We're doing pretty well. We're about 300 simoleons under what that elegance table cost us. So when I like to create different hallway tables. This especially works in rustic type homes because you've got the sawhorse legs, but you just kind of moo this down until you can't see the top of the sawhorse. And then you just grab the legs and you just kind of play with it, eyeball it, make sure that it's centered. And voila, we've got ourselves a hall table and it's cheap, cheerful, and it's kind of rustic, kind of cute. So you can decorate this to your heart's desire. There, you can have plants, flowers, and a light. And this can be anywhere in the hallway, it can be under a window. 
and it just looks cute, it looks homemade, and yeah, I like it. So that's a really easy way to play with Moo. And we're gonna move on to the next bit. Look at these beautiful, colorful cabinets that I would never put in any home that I ever build ever. But let's have a little fun with this. So I do a trick a lot of times in my builds where I get rid of one of the cabinets. Now, before I talk about that, let's rewind a little bit. Because you can see these three objects that are on top of the cabinet. So this is kind of a mini tip for you guys. This doesn't really have anything to do with move objects on. You can do this without cheat. I just wanted to show you because I've got these three cabinets set up for you. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this cock holder, <laughs> rooster utensil holder. And so we've got it selected. If I press M on my keyboard, watch what happens. M. 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 So when you're pressing M on your keyboard, the item is trying to find all of the available slots on the surface. So you can do this without dragging it around and having it jump around crazily for you. You just press M until it gets back to its original spot and then you know where it can go on top of the surface. And it's not just counters that you can do this on, I'm pretty sure you can do this on these. So let's select that. Yep, it's gonna show you all of the places that it can go on this particular shelf. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I digress. There's a small little tip for you, but to get rid of the counters and just leave the countertop, what I will do is I will go and I'll grab the cheapest dishwasher. It's a Swiss dishwasher for 300 simoleons. And I say the cheapest because if you're on a budget, you're not gonna gain back the cost of what the dishwasher was by deleting it, which kind of sucks. So I put the dishwasher in the middle and then we go shift control, click, you get this pie menu coming up and I go, deleted, so it's gone. If I were to touch this particular cabinet again, let's say I wanted to move it, the cabinet returns in a different color for some reason, and I've got to spend the simoleons again on the Swiss dishwasher to then again delete it. So just be mindful when you're placing the dishwasher that that is exactly where you want to delete the lower cabinet. And then with move objects on, I'm just gonna grab this shelf and I'm just gonna yoink it down like so. And then you can kind of decorate underneath and you've got this open shelving cabinet look. Sometimes I like to put food and fruit down there and it's kind of like a mini pantry. And it's, it's just a cool little fun tip trick that I like to do. And for my final mood trick, what I'm going to show you is how I put together that desk that I did in the teenager's room in the renovation of Mosquito Cove. So I've got all of the elements. I've chosen a non-store content end table instead of the one that I use, but I've got the double deluxe end table. And then we've got the phobic dining table, which also has this Bodkin laptop computer by Peachy Soft. And then I've got the cadet chair by Optimal Construction. So those are the, the basics of the bottom of this desk that we're going to create. I'm also going to grab this long shelf because it's very handy. And so this is the position of where we want everything on the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the long shelf and I'm going to move it all the way down like so, just so it sits on top of the desk and on top of the end table. So you've got that. And then we're gonna take these Cubist Creating Wall Shelf by Standard Issue, and we're just gonna pull it down until it looks right. And then we're gonna take this one, do the same, pull it down until it looks right. That looks about right. And then I'm going to pull, of course, the Astral Plane Wall Shelf by Van Allen. We're going to put that up there just for S and Gs. You don't have to put it up there. You could totally end it without that. And you could put it there if you wanted to. And we're just going to pull that out. Play with the M, M key. I've got the Kinetic Collider Table Light all selected. So it's showing me where it can go on this. If I move it over to here, it's going to show me the places that it can go on the dining table that we've used. There's so many different slots and places. By moving all this together, you've got a few different new places that you can put items for your sims and to make it look really lived in. That's why I love clutters because it makes it look really lived in and it really shows your sims personalities. But as soon as you get this recolored, then it's all gonna look like one cohesive piece, which is the beauty of create a style, which is perfect because that's what I wanna talk about next. Ah, create a style. That very, very unique feature to The Sims 3 that some people can find very overwhelming. If we press R 
on our keyboard, it brings the tool up and we can have loads of fun. Now I know that this tool can be super duper overwhelming, especially when you get into patterns and asymmetric things and abstract choices, it can get really, really overwhelming. Like, what do I do? My best advice for the create a style tool is to just play around with it and don't be afraid of it because you'll get lots of fun, cool, different results than if you just stick with the default pattern. So we're just gonna go and we're gonna create a style this wall. So let's go into geometric. I love geometric things and let's pick this one. Right, that looks really overwhelming. Now you can see this color palette where if you move the entire thing, it's going to change the color of the entirety of the pattern. I don't like to do that. I like to play with these individual circles. So what I will typically do is I'll start with the first one and I'll go down to the hex code and I will type in F, 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 F until I can't type any more Fs. That is the hex code for white and I'll hit enter. So my background is basically white. And then what I'll do is I'll just move the white bubbles around and see what I can get rid of. So this is a fun pattern to me. This is something that I would probably put in a teenager's room so and then you can just play with that specific bubble that specific circle I might want to do something and go black and white that's not as fun but you know if you move this bubble over here and your backgrounds black and then you move your white over here then you can have a different pattern or if you move your black over here and then you make that one white so we've got a few different patterns going on just from one selection. Let's make that one black and, that, and then we're back to our original X's. So honestly, just play around, have fun with it. Where's another fun one? Right, this looks overwhelming as hell. I would never put this on any of my walls, but let's just see what happens if we go to this first one and we type in F, F, F. And of course it doesn't have to be white, but it just, for me, it gives a clearer picture of what I'm changing. So let's get rid of those. So we're left with some circles. Let's do that. And then we're left with this. I might put this on a bedspread. And again, let's go for black. Or I, I, maybe I'd put that in a half bath. It's not too shabby. It looks all right. But you guys can kind of see what I'm getting with. Play with these bubbles, not necessarily this one from the beginning, because you could just surprise yourself with the Create a Style tool. And another thing I like to use Create a Style on is dressers. I've recently started doing this uh, because I actually did this to some dressers in my own house um, where the pull-out drawers are actually wallpapered. So just go and find like a fun, funky fabric or a geometric pattern because I love geometric patterns. I'm a fan of the dots. And then you go in and again, I would probably change that to white just because. And then just mess around with your background and let's make it like a really bright yellow. She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. So yeah, my advice for create a style is just have fun with it because it is, it's a really fun tool. Super fun, can come up with lots of options and don't be afraid of it because it's not that scary. You just, it just takes a lot of time. And this is why I'm an indecisive sloth because create a style opens up so many different possibilities for you. Now, while we're still talking about the create a style tool, somebody asked me about the blank canvases that they saw in my last speed build and how I was able to get create a style on it. And up front, it's a mod. It's the stencil remover by Velocity Grass. I'll link it down below. This mod allows you to remove stencils overlays that are on top of objects in the game. So it works on a lot of things, but some things it doesn't. So you just, it's trial and error about what it works on. It also works in Create a Sim. So you can remove stencils, you can remove patterns, and I'm just gonna show you what happens when you do this. So let's start with the canvases. I'm gonna press R again to get the create a style tool up and we're gonna click on it and then we're gonna go shift control C to bring up the cheat box. And there's three options that you can use here. So you've got deco space O, deco space S and deco space M. You've got to play with it 
to see what removes what. So I'm gonna start with deco space O, which stands for overlay, and that didn't do anything. So we're gonna pull up the cheat box again, shift control C, and we're gonna go for deco space S, which is the stencil, and that removes it. Now, what you need to do when you're using this mod is you have to make sure to accept this, because if you don't accept it and you start changing the patterns, it's just going to revert back to the, the old default picture. So we're gonna do it on this one too. Let's go for deco O for overlay. That did that one, and we're just gonna accept that, and then we're gonna go same thing here, deco, let's go for O on this one and that removes that one. And then we accept that. And then now we can recolor these however we want. I'm gonna pull from this dresser because I like the eensy weensy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. And we're just gonna drag it over to this one. And then so we've got that. And then let's grab this portion of the wall and then let's yoink that over here. I probably wouldn't do this, but you get the point. You get the gist. And then Let's go up to this painting and let's just pull a theme. How about some cherries? And so you have cherries on the outside and then let's go for some clouds or something on the inside like so. And again, play around with it, have fun with it but it's a really cool mod. And my favorite portion of this, I've actually got two favorite things about this, is because it moves stencils and overlays, if you go to this cock utensil holder or rooster utensil holder, and we open up the sheet box and we type in deco O, that gets rid of that hideous rooster. <laughs> and you've got yourselves a plain Jane utensil holder. And then if you just go back into it, you can change it to whatever you like any type of wood, let's go for that one because I love that wood, not in that color. And then, you know, it's, it's whatever you wanna do, which is the great thing. More options, more customization, and you've got yourself this fun little utensil holder, however you want it to look. But my favorite, favorite part is this bed. So I love this bed from Diesel Stuff, but I avoid using this bed like the plague because of that really, really bad pattern that's just stuck on it. I hate that pattern. And never knew how to get rid of it until Velocity Grasses mod came out. So shift control C, we're going to go deco O. Is that an overlay? It's not an overlay. So we're going to go for deco S, which is the stencil. We're going to accept that. And then we're going to open it again. And you've got all these moving parts now that you can move and you can make into whatever you want to make into it. Let's change this up. Let's make it a geometric pattern. How about that one? Oh my goodness. Yes, it's butte. And then change your sheets up. Let's do some themed sheets, go for those. But you can put anything on it that you wanna put on it. And that is why I love this mod so much because it extends that arm of customization. And again, you can create unique spaces based on your Sims's personality, their favorite colors, their hobbies. There's just so much you can do. And I just, I really love this mod. So I will link it down below and have a go. Have some fun. So I had a specific question on how to decorate large spaces and also how to decorate corners. So as you all know, I like tight, cozy spaces. So I probably wouldn't have a bedroom, say, that is this large, but maybe a bedroom that is that large. To me, that is a massive bedroom. So what do we do with all of this dead space? My advice would be to decorate it based off your Sim's likes or if they've got any hobbies. So let's say your Sim was into painting. So you can just shove a painting thing or you could shove it at the end of the bed like so. And then decorate around it with the things that make sense for painting. So you could actually have something like this. So I've created a whole sort of painting corner and I feel like it fills up the space pretty well. Let's look at it from the top. So to me, that's not a bad use of space. You've still got lots of room for your sim to maneuver, 
but let's say you wanted to fill it up more, you definitely can. So if you grabbed a, a coffee table, and let's say you grabbed this auto table too, you could put that at the end of the bed and that could be like a place for your sim to sit. So again, we're just filling up the space. Now this corner is a little bit of dead space, but I would say that the door would be here if you had a door. And I, I just think this is plenty to go into a big room like this. Still lots of room for your sim to get around. Um, almost two tiles wide, which is what I like. And you've got everything in there that you need. But let's say you weren't doing a bedroom. Let's say you were doing a bonus space. So a space where all the family can come and hang out, games, fun, maybe somewhere to watch television. If you've got big spaces, make them multi-purpose rooms. So you can have a hobby corner, you could have a games corner, you can have a TV corner. And the best way is to create different zones. And you can create different zones a few different ways. So one of the ways that I create different zones if I were to build a massive room is with rugs. So let me just show you very quickly how we can turn this sort of blank massive space into a multi-purpose space for all of the family. So I've created three different zones. At the right, we've got the living zone with the TV, the stereo, the comfy seating. In the middle, we have got a pool table. And then to the left, we have got some arcade machines. And they're just zoned by the rugs. So rugs can take up a lot of space, but they're good space fillers because it breaks up the spacing. So like I was saying before, have multi-purpose rooms. If you're gonna have large rooms, make them multi-purpose, zone them out with rugs. That's a really good way to zone them out. And the great thing about this rug that sits within the living room is if you go deco s that removes the stencil you accept it and you can make these whatever you want that is why i love that stencil mod it's so cool and it just allows you to do lots of different things and in terms of corners sometimes you don't need to decorate every single corner not every corner in this overview is decorated if you feel that a particular corner is looking a little sad a little lonely my advice to decorate corners is with plants. You can have a nice little plant family in a corner and it works, but it's an eyeball thing. If it looks too over calculated, if it looks too over engineered, then it probably is. Go with your gut feeling. And like I said, not every corner needs something in it. So I hope that this helps with large spaces with corner decoration and that this was particularly useful. The one thing to take away from this is with large rooms, when in doubt, zone it out. So my final piece of advice for decorating your Sims homes is to get yourselves some tester sims. These are my tester sims. They've been my ride or dies for probably about 10 years. They could definitely use a makeover because it has been a while since I've actually touched them, but they come in handy with almost every build that I do. So from left to right, as you're looking at the screen, we have Bellamy Patrick, who is my nectar connoisseur. We have A-Ray, who is kind of an all-arounder. She is level 10 in handiness. She also paints and sketches for me. We've got Quinn Miller, who is the seat tester. So she goes around, tests all the seats, all the beds, make sure that your sins can get there without waving their arms, stomping their feet. We've got Eric Miller, her husband. He is also level 10 in handiness and he is my photographer. We're gonna show off some of his work shortly. And then we have Lang Price, again, another all arounder. She has level 10 in handiness. She sketches, she paints. 
but she is also in the architectural design career, and I will let you know why that is important. So with a lot of my tester sims being level 10 in handiness, I get a discount on build mode items. Like I mentioned, Lang Price is in the architectural design career, so I get a discount on buy items. And I don't know if you recall, but if we just go up like so, do you remember when I first used this old looking new fridge in the kitchen area? It's gone down in price, so let me just rebuy it again because if you pull it from the catalog straight away with Lang Price on the lot, because she's in the architectural design career, I get a pretty hefty discount. So this is now 255 simoleons versus I think it was in the 400 simoleons when I didn't have my tester sins on the lot. So having somebody in the architectural design career plus handiness gives you a pretty good discount. So tester sims do come in handy. So the next thing that tester sims are really good for is Photography. So the photography skill came with World Adventures. Like I said before, Eric Miller is my photographer. I think Lang Price dabbles in a bit of photography as well. So most of these pictures you won't recognize because they aren't in game. What I did ages ago, this is ages ago, I've had these paintings in Eric's inventory for ages. But if you look at everything apart from the flowers and the two girls that are holding Coke bottles. Everything else, I'm pretty sure, is custom content. Now, there's a caveat to this. This won't show up as custom content in your game. What I did was I took pictures that were custom content, I put them in my game, I had Eric Miller take pictures of them with the World Adventures photography skill, and voila, it doesn't count as custom content. So I no longer have these portraits in my game as custom content. I just use the photographs that Eric's taken. I think that's fantastic. You can come up with infinite amount of possibilities. Now, the two girls holding a Coke bottle, I believe is from Starlight Shores. I think there's a billboard there of two girls holding Coke bottles. I just had Eric go and take a picture of that. I don't think I've ever used that in any of my homes, but you know, you can do things. Now the flowers, that's actually an in-game painting. What I did with that is, do you remember when we were talking about changing the light colors? Well, I took some of those invisible lights and there are invisible wall lights and I faced them towards the painting. I changed the color to green in this instance. And then I had Eric take a picture of how the light reflected off of it. So I've got this green version of the base game painting. I think I've got a red version as well. And I just changed the color that was focused on the painting and then got something different and unique. Another great thing that I use my tester sims for is also painting and sketches. So what you've got in the middle, the three pictures in the middle, those are all paintings. And then the four paintings on the outside, those are all sketches. So in order to get your sim to sketch, you need to have ambitions and you need to use the drafting table that is most used for the architectural design career and you can get lots of cool things you just need to have patience so basically lock your sims in a room for days this sounds really sadistic lock them in a room for days put their needs all the way up to green keep them at green all the time and just pump out churn out those sketches and those paintings and you'll get some really cool fun results I really need to utilize these more in my homes but get yourself some tester sims because they can make your homes very unique, very fun. And also, if you're gonna be using a lot of move objects on a lot of move, make sure your tester sims go around, put those bums on those seats, and make sure that your sims can get everywhere that they possibly need to get. So my beauts, I think that is a wrap. And to see us out, I'm going to have the evolution of my interiors popping across the screen from the very, very bad to hopefully the much more beautiful. And just a disclaimer, some of these screenshots will have custom content in them, but I no longer have it in my game. But we have covered 
a boatload in this hour long video. We have covered minimum room sizes, layouts of specific rooms. We've had some neurotics tips in there. We've had some mini tips in there. We've had lighting tricks, decorating corners, decorating large spaces. We've covered move objects on, create a style, the stencil remover, which will be linked down below in the description. We've also covered my tester sims and what they are good for. And another thing that I didn't cover, but another little hint tip or trick. If you ever get stuck on interiors, Pinterest is a very, very good source of information as well as Googling what colors go together. I often find myself on Google thinking what goes with orange, what goes with navy blue, and you can get some really cool color combinations. So that is one final tip from me to you. Also something that I didn't cover in this video that I got a specific question about was the festival lot marker that came with seasons. And what the festival lot marker does is you decorate your home for each season and then your home when the seasons change automatically changes its decor depending on what season it is. It's very complicated to explain but if it's a video that you guys would like to see let me know down below in the comments but I really hope that this video was useful for you that you found some hints tips and tricks that you can take away and put into your own interiors so I think I'm going to love you and leave you guys now. I've rambled on long enough and if you guys are still here after all this time comment down below cozy vibes only. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to do all those cool interweb things like comment and subscribe. Make sure you've got that bell a ding down to so be notified whenever I do upload. But for now, I'm gonna ski, ski, skedaddle. Don't be a pump stranger now, guys.